Welcome back to another episode of a very basic space program. So last episode we uh, we tried to go to the moon and um, we failed terribly. And I, I'm 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 starting to think that um, I'm, I don't know. Looking back at the footage, I don't know if there was actually any thrust on those RCS or not. Whether the craft was just too heavy for them and it was being realistic, I'm not entirely sure. So I need to have a look at that. I think. Um, what I will say is I think maybe. Uh, maybe we basically uh, put a bit more fuel on board and put some extra RCS ports onto that that sort of uh, transfer stage, the, the lunar transfer stage. Um, in this episode, uh, we're not going to do that though. We're going we're gonna to try and complete a satellite contract, so um, please join me. Right, so uh, one, I would really love to go and get on with our lunar contract because I, I don't like loon leaving contracts lying around. However, we do have uh, two contracts for satellites. We've got this atmospheric analysis and we also have a th 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 early navigation, first navigation satellite. Okay, um, I'm going to combine those into two because the atmospheric one just requires that we do some science and the early navigation one requires that we do... Um, we basically put something at a high inclination um, and carry some some payload with us. Um, so I'm going to do both of them in one. That means we have to get into an apoapse of over 600 kilometers and a periapse over 300. And we need an inclination over 45 degrees. We need 100 units of, of communication payload. So I've put together this. So sat one, test one. I'm not entirely sure where the name came from. So yeah, you can see we're launching on uh, the latest version of the Javelin 3 uh, because we don't need anything bigger, actually. I was surprised. Um, I thought this was gonna be a bigger mission. So we've taken our geostationary satellite and I've actually modified it. And um, what I've basically done is I've put some roll control on it. I've taken off the uh, AirB engine and put on one of our little kilonewton thrusters, gives us eight minutes, because we may need to just do some, some work in orbit, put this in the right position. Um, you can see here we've got a chunk of uh, a procedural service module, which is, oh, I can actually operate that, that's interesting. I should really realize that, although I don't think it does much, does it? It just makes it, well, it, it loses a lot of weight, actually. The, the, the weight goes down significantly. That's quite good to know. I must remember that. So that I've already built this in, in reality. It's already been built, so I'm not gonna do that. But um, that gives us a pressurized component for RCS, stuff like that. And then we've got another tank down here, which is our integral pressurized tank, which used to have the fuel for the Airbnb. We've now got the HTP. So all of this stuff here should be running on HTP, hopefully. Um, again, I'm using I'm using this uh, internal RCS, but I think I'm going to shift over to using these uh, because I like internal RCS because it looks quite like, like hidden. But actually, um, I have problems with it. I've, I've had problems with it in the past, and I'm concerned that the last mission was partly due to it. So we're going to try this mission as is, and if I have to retrofit one of them with different stuff, then we do. Um, I've kept these RCS ports on the bottom, um, even though we have this one kilonewton thrust that doesn't need ullage just because it, it allows refinement of the orbit if need be but it's more because I was thinking can we use this for something else can we use this craft or, or just as a, as a satellite bus for some other missions so I'll have to have a look at that um, so there we go so that's on our uh, Javelin 3 um, it is on the launch pad right now so let's go and um, let's go and see if we can finish this mission right here we are on the launch pad I'm actually going to send this polar because one of the other things I didn't say was that we've actually operated the um, the antenna on this. It's actually got a bigger antenna. Um, well, not a bigger antenna, it's a more powerful antenna. And it's also more up to date, it's tech level three. And I think the original antenna on it was a tech level zero because I didn't operate it. I didn't, I didn't purchase the things in the, in the uh, research thing to be able to do that. Um, but actually, let's just get this going. So we're gonna be heading at zero. Um, and we're gonna go at 90, that's okay. And uh, yeah, I think we're ready to go. So let's just launch this thing. It's quite high up in the sky already, actually, I've just realized. There we go, launch. And oh, we don't have control. I've just remembered, we don't have control on the launch of this thing because we've, we've, we've not operated the uh, the guidance on it. So I must remember to do that at some point. Although saying that, it gets off the, the ground quite nicely, doesn't it? Um, right, uh, we should probably be pitching over quite violently right now. Um, Right, so thought processes on this are quite simple, really. It is, um, 
I don't think I needed as much uh, as much solids as that. I probably just overdone the solids. In fact, I'm pretty sure this craft is just overdone in general. We could have probably launched it on a 60 ton pad, um, but I just took what we'd actually already used and just uh, simplified it. Right, now are those dead? Well, let's find out. Oh, and we've lost the fairing. Oh, this is a horrible launch. Well, that's ruined now, technically, because it's going through the atmosphere, although we've gone past max Q, I'm guessing. Yeah, we've gone past max Q and the atmosphere is thin, so I'm going to let myself have that. Normally, I would terminate the flight because the satellite should probably be destroyed, but um, that, that could be worse, shall we say. Right, let's just get this thing up. Right, so what I was going to say is this has a antenna on it that's actually a tech level 3, and I can't remember when antennas can start acting as relays. Um, but we've got a problem with signal in orbit, so my thought process is if this can act as a relay, that would be uh, that'd be quite good for us, in fact. Um, so I may look at just putting this into a nice high orbit. It does not have a m maximum uh, altitude, I don't think. I need to check this. It's got to be above, yeah, so it's got to be above those. So we could actually just put this into a really high altitude sort of launch. So what I might do is I might send this up to, uh, I don't know, a, a reasonable altitude, and then we'll circularize it with the uh, the stuff that's on board. Uh, the fuel on board and see how it goes it might be able to work as a little relay for us i don't know um again we, it all depends upon the power of the transmitter it's near earth so it should be able to do something for us but uh we will see so we're going up reasonably quick we've got a lot of i, I, I forgot how how putting solids on the uh on the javelin 3 actually turns it into a bit of a like a missile from the pad i should have actually just looked at the numbers there that was crazy this craft is actually overkill for this, and I didn't think it was going to be when I used it. Um, but we could have stripped off a load of those solids, actually, and still still achieved what we want to achieve with this. So there we go. And I'm not too worried about our altitude, as long as we're actually uh, doing okay. Not a big issue. Um, be nice if we actually got to maybe about three minutes. I'm actually happy staying at this burn, actually, because uh, a high altitude is not a big issue for this one. Um, in fact, yeah, I'm just going to stick with this. I was going to lower it down, but uh, we actually would prefer a higher altitude. We could have. I'm actually looking at this thinking I could have potentially launched this without anything on here. We could have done it without any fuel on board um, and saved ourselves. We could have really used a stripped down version of this completely, um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So we've got our RCS on this as well, so that gives us a little bit of control. I'm going to speed you this up just a smidgen. There we go. We're going to do that. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it down to about 15. There we go. Um, and I don't really mind. And we can just we just buzz this up uh, quite quickly. So I actually do that as well. Just go really, really, really fast now. There we go. So we're down to that there. And I'm actually going to uh, put this on zero. There we go. So that's going to pull pull that down now. And then once I get to lower, I'll actually pop this up again. I'm just aware that the uh, potentially if that doesn't go down and this continues to go down, you get to a point where you, you actually can't fight back and, and get your right sort of time. But equally, I don't really mind what altitude we're going to circularize at. So I could... Uh, I could play around with this a little bit. We could uh, we could have a little mess around, see what we can do with orbital mechanics and so forth. Yeah, um, let's give it about five degrees just to, to pull it up there. So we've got about two and a half minutes left on this. That's nice, isn't it? Um, this might be a short episode, actually, if we get this done. Um, I don't know if I want to include some stuff about trying to fix the other craft. We'll have to have a look, um, see how long this episode is when I've finished. So yeah, so hopefully this may be able to work as a little bit of a, a relay of some sort. That would be really nice for us. But we will see. We'll go back to one times now. Um, can't go faster than that because the ship's under acceleration now because we're now out of, the, we're out of the atmosphere. So what I'm actually going to do is pop this down because we are now doing a lot of a lot of circularization. And we're going to keep burning just a little smidgen. And I'm going to take it up to, I don't know, 2,000? Yeah, 2,000 kilometers, 4,000, 5,000. Um, uh, there, that's okay, right. And um, I actually don't care about a lot of stuff to do with this. So let's have a look. What are we doing program-wise for contracts? So this is actually, this is okay. It's, it's actually reached its required orbitals. Um, this one down here needs to go higher, I believe. Yes, it does. So what we'll do is we'll decouple that and there we go oh oh dear that is a problem isn't it 
do I have? I do. Okay, so we can actually complete it. So, you know what? Just made a big boo-boo because I didn't check the avionics. That's a note to self, isn't it? Right. Um, all of these are stopped, are they? Let's get them going. So get you on, get you on, get you on. Right. I could actually start the engine right now and just go really uh, high inclination, but uh, we will see. So that's my periap. So I want to go up to here. Let's go to here. Warp here. There we go. All the way around. Now we have to start getting a bit more interesting. So yeah, what, what am I facing? Am I am I retrograde or am I prograde? And that's a good question. Um, there we go. So, oh, no, don't start the engine. Now we're just defeating everything we're doing. So we actually want to fire these backwards on ourselves. And good thing is because these use the same fuel as that engine, I can actually, if I'm clever, just put the time up on and we just do that. There we go. There we go. Uh, can't can't do anything. I could actually dump some fuel. Is is actually what I could do, but I don't need to. Um, do I have the ability to do any? And no, I don't. I can just do forward and backwards. That's interesting. So I can still do forwards and backwards. Um, with this now, I thought that we'd stopped that happening when you didn't have avionics. Oh, we're going backwards. Oh, actually. We're about to come round, and I can uh, I can fire the main engines, which would be fun, won't it? So let's just do that. That's when we get near there. So there we go. Fire that. Get that going. How exciting! And then hopefully we'll actually get to a point where the mass of this craft drops down enough, so I can actually do something. Uh, this is the terrible, terrible approach to uh, getting orbits going. Um, we are actually in the, the the required area now for that one. Ah, there we are. We've now done it. So I want to be progrid. Uh, progrid. There we go. So, not to self, check your avionics. This is two episodes now where I have just been poor. Like the RCS is working on this one fine, but I didn't check the avionics because I forgot that the probe that we actually used last time was lighter because I've actually had to put an extra bit of tankage on here for the extra uh, payload. And I bet you if we'd have actually upgraded that to a service module two, we probably would have been okay actually thinking about it. Right, here we go. Let's uh, fire some engines. Just going to take this up so that's that's complete basically we've just got to wait a little bit of time so this one requires that we send some low in space pressure scan stuff so what we will do is while that's burning we will come here where are we where's my are you, oh it's glitchy isn't it oh it's done that oh there we are that's actually what i want um we can actually force it so we want info i want to force run and info I want to force run right and then that's going to take a while to do but that's not an issue there we go let's put that there so I can see the time on it um, and when it gets up to 200% it should transmit it I believe so that should complete that task um, and what we can actually do is we can just speed this up so yeah if you've never used force run before for these these contracts it's actually quite a handy little thing to do um, particularly if you get something like this where you've actually done all of this before because although these 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 scientific scans are not required for first orbit, first scientific orbit, things like that, you always put them on because they're available, um, and you or your sounding rockets have done them when they're when they're in space. So yeah, and because it's there's not no biome specificity or anything like that, it uh, it can be problematic actually. Um, so we're just doing that. Uh, okay, they're both going up now. That's interesting. We can actually do this a bit quicker. There we go. Um, I don't know where what I want to do regarding uh, regarding this. Let's have a look. That's that's not bad actually. That's going to cover if that can transmit to other other craft. Can I can I? Oh, it, see, it's got a shortish range now. Ah, now if I remember rightly, these have got short range, haven't they? One dBV. Okay, so potentially, and we're near our apoapsis. In fact, I can uh, I can actually turn this off. We want to get to here, don't we? So we could just do that. Oh, we've done it. We've transmitted that science. That's good. All right. I think we've transmitted that science up. Yeah, nope. Navigation's done. Where's my science one? Where's my science one? Oh, it's done as well. So we can actually stop those now. Stop and stop. They did like 15,000 science for us. Right. Uh, we can do pro progress. Fire that engine again. Um, 
Right, so you are one decibel, one decibel. Okay, those are just standard stations. The Canberra one is much more powerful. So that's the, 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 uh, the one that you don't want to rate off. But these ones are just one decibel. I don't know what our antenna is because we need to actually have a think about this, don't we? What is our antenna? Right. Um, uh, com signal, first hop 40 miles. First hop distance 40 meters. That doesn't make a sense. Um, 1.5 decibel gain, transmission power, okay okay so this might be able to do something i don't know if it'll be powerful enough but uh it's it's worth figuring out it might be able to do something it might be able to do something well we'll see we'll see it might help us it might not it's not as if we're losing anything by putting it into a reasonably circular orbit um i actually missed a trick because i have actually left two of the science space is empty um, again because of weight and so forth and I've obviously underestimated things so these last two episodes have been pretty much me failing horrendously at everything which is uh, which is not new but it's not nice either right there we go we're gonna bring that in that's nice uh, when you get over four we'll just stop you and there we go now well, these are uh, what are they first generation panels so they're gonna break down pretty quickly um, but we should be producing we should be producing a decent amount yeah we're we're basically if I put time warp on yeah we're gonna be it's gonna basically be producing uh, electricity up the Wang Zoo whenever it's uh, what's our drain normally normal drain is yeah it's it's gonna be fine I don't really need to worry about oh now that's interesting that is interesting if you come back where's the where's the planet there we are it's RCS is stuck on now how did that happen that's interesting isn't it so the RCS stayed on even though we were on physical time up or was it just presenting yeah it must have been just it must have just been a graphical glitch otherwise the craft would have kept spinning around because it wasn't changing its thrust patterns or anything okay right so we've at least completed two contracts in the last two missions. It's just not the one of them isn't the contract that I really wanted to complete. So we finished atmospheric. We finished first navigation. We've got mm, a little bit of science that we need to spend at some point. Probably do that at the start of the next episode. And next episode, I think we need to fix the whole getting to the moon thing with our new craft because that just makes no sense. So I may I may take it in and change it a bit, make sure all of the settings are correct. Um, so from me, until next time, have a great one.